All right, you're ready. Go ahead. All right, 2007 AP problem, free response, number three, loud calculators. It says, it gives you a table and it says the function f and g are differentiable for all real numbers. g is strictly increasing, so g prime of x is always greater than zero. The table above gives values for the, for the functions and their first derivatives of the selected values. The function is given, h of x is given by that. And the first one says, explain why there must be a value r between one and three such that h of r equals negative five. And right away you should start to feel like this is IVT. So the first thing I'm going to do is I figure out h1, which I've done down below the board here. I plug in one and I get three. I'm also going to do three, which I'm going to work through on the board. h of three is f of g of three minus three. If I use the table, g of three is four. So I get f of four minus six. f of four from the table is negative one. So negative 1 minus 6, h of 3 is going to be negative 7. Awesome. Oh, now, yeah, and, and you catch, you, and you see that h of r negative 5 is in between. And if it's differentiable, you know the function is continuous. Right. So you got to make the language here since f and g are differentiable. They are then continuous, right? So H is continuous. You've got to make it so that it's continuous to use IVT, right? So now what can you say? Now that you know they're continuous, you could say by IVT. Do I say H of R or H of X? H of, it'd be H of R, right? Yeah, but it's F of X. Oh, it's H of X. X. You could say H of X. Doesn't matter? Doesn't matter. It, I would use H of X. Thus, by AT, there's a value between 1 and, by AT, for a value between 1 and 3, there exists a value R, a value R <coughs> such that H of R equals H of value R such that and then you need to specify it's H only of maybe. 1 is between H of R is less than H of 3, right? So H of R can equal 0? So right, H of five. R, well not 0 this time, I, I so five. H of R can equal negative 5. Do we have to specify that it's on the interval 1 to 3? You should. Right. You probably don't have to because it's in the word problem. I did. Yeah. I haven't, but. and again, just like you guys, I'll score this here, all right? I haven't scored it. This is what I would do. We can put up the score sheet here, you know, as a separate part. All right. Letter B. Letter B. Let's go to a new page. I'm going to do parallel pages. I know that's a little rougher to see. Um, letter B. Explain why there must be a value C for... 1 to 3, all right? Let's do this instead. We're going to copy it. We're going to paste the new page. Uh -huh. Bam. Bam. Explain why there must be a value C for 1 to 3 such that H prime of C equals negative 5. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I better find the derivative, right? Mm -hmm. Do we all agree H, if H of X is F of G of X minus 6, Derivative is h prime of x, and it's a chain rule for the first one. F, f prime, prime g of, of x times g, of g prime x, and derivative of 6 is 0. So there's the derivative, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, for some reason I can't get rid of the other way. So now, I'd really like to know, okay, what h prime of 1 and h prime of 3 are. And that's where we got to start, okay? Because we don't know, all right? We know g is strictly increasing here, all right? So if we plug this in, we got f prime of g of 1 times g prime of 1, right? Okay. So let's do that. Let's do that math. What are you going to get for that math? Let's take a second here and make sure we get the right answer. This problem isn't that hard, actually. 
It's, it's just, not hard. But it's not hard. It's just, just long, I think, is the, is the words I'm going to use. Right. I don't think there's anything hard about it. I'm going to make sure I get what I have. All right. I probably wouldn't have gotten to this point. Oh, you know what? This is not. This is a bad way of doing it. Why? Is it the way you have to do it? No. No. But there's, this an, is there's, an, there's an easier way to do this. How is there an easier way? This seems pretty easy as it is. Well, no, hang on. Let's, again, I think I'm off base here. Explain why there must be a value C for 1 to 3 such that H prime of C equals negative 5. What do you know? Okay, let's back up for a second. Do you guys agree there's an H of X function? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's think about this. And they want between 1 and 3. And I don't know what the function looks like, except it says there's going to be a derivative that's negative 5, so it must be, must look something like this. All right, I don't care what it looks like. All right. My point is we know something. All right. If we can show that, what's, if we show the slope, I want to know what the slope is from 1 to 3 because if the slope here is negative 5 if the average rate of change is negative 5 what do you know about the instant rate instant rate of change it has to equal negative 5 somewhere it has to equal negative 5 somewhere so the real question is before we jump off the cliff and try to prove it another way what does this equal what does that equal oh, that, would be easier. Um, that would be a lot easier let's look at the table Oh, negative we don't. 7 minus 3, so you have negative 10 over 2. So negative negative 10 over 2, which is thus by oh mean my value gosh, theorem. It's so easy. Thus by mean value theorem, h prime of c equals negative 5 between what? Between 1 and 3, right? And that would be the mean value theorem. We can't, we, there's no other way to do it because it doesn't tell us the things we need to do it the way I was about to run down. Well, you still have f prime and g prime on our. I know, but you don't know. You know g prime is strictly increasing, but what do you? Does it tell you anything about f prime? Yeah. No. And you can't assume anything. All right. So. Why would you need to know that f prime is doing something? You'd have to know it's continuous, right, and all some other things, right? Yeah. You know, it says it's differentiable. Do we need any more information to further prove that it's MVT? No. No. It's no. just that the slope equals that. Yeah. Because you know that the average rate of change equals the instantaneous rate of change at least once, if not more than once, right? If it's continuous. If, and it is, right? Since, I mean, because what do we know about H? Since H is what? It's just F of Since X. H is differentiable and continuous, right? Because F and G are differentiable and continuous, thus H is differentiable and continuous. Okay. All right. I'm going to new page. You want to do C? Uh, yeah, please. Um, if we do get like a four or three on our um, thing, on yeah. our AP exam, yep. and four or five. Right. Or, and we choose to take Calc 1 again? You should get an easy A. Right, but does that credit still count? Like if you were to pass it depends, you credit, I don't know. At Platteville, it did for Jacob Ramos because they, they gave him, they gave him credit for business calc and then he took engineering calc. Okay. So you can work with whoever get awards credit. So if I got like let's we'll say like I got a three or something and then they are giving me that credit for calculus, but since we went to engineering, I could retake calc one and I. You see yeah, exactly. You okay. you you'd want to meet your buyer. Say I really want that credit to count for. I really want to take calc one again. Have an easy A. Mm -hmm. I would like to see that three or four count as business calc. Because there will be a business calc at Iowa State that's right. not engineering calc. Right. All right. Letter C. Let W be the function given by W of X equals 1 to G of X, F of T, D, T. Find the value of W prime of 3. All right. W prime of 3. Okay, this, guys, is FTC. So the first thing we got to do is take the derivative of W, X, right? Which is just F of T. Ah, you forgot G something. Of X. It's, yeah, W prime is just F of G of X, right? Bring this down inside. I don't understand that at all. You just bring, so you just bring the top of the integral into the function? Yeah. Well, your because you're integrating this yeah. from one to a variable. Okay. 
So when you take the derivative of an antiderivative, what you end up with? The thing you started with, right? Right. But you also have to do the chain rule. Okay. All right? So that's the derivative. So now it's really easy. What value do they want? W3. W prime of 3 is equal to f of g of 3 times g prime of 3. And I love smart boards. Hopefully this is his own line. It is because I can carry that all the way up here to the table where we can see it. Oh, Shrink it down. And first off, g of 3 is 4. So I have f of 4. And you guys agree g prime of 3 is 2. f of 4 is negative 1. Negative one. Negative two. So I think w prime is negative 2, and I'm pretty sure I'm right. And again, I probably want to keep Make sure I keep great notation. There. And that would be letter C. All right? Mr. Where do I find the radius of your? Uh, top of the questions, all right? It'll be ahead of the top of those questions. Before the start of the questions, it's going to give you a whole bunch of information. It didn't give me. Not at the very beginning of the section. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see anything on the radius. All right. You want to do the last one? We're rolling. Yeah, because that one's pretty. Like taking the. The derivative of the, the the inverse function is difficult. Let g of negative one be the inverse function of g. <coughs> right. So when you're given the y value, it spits back the x. x. Write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of y equals g negative one of x at x equals two. We have a formula for this, right? right. If you have, you guys remember, if you have f negative one of x prime. It is equal to what? 1 over what? G. Oh, I have this written down. Hold on. All right. I have it down. And if you want, I'm going to see what section it is because, again, if you don't remember it right now, you've I got to. we had a formula for it. You've Wait. got to practice it. It is section 7, 1, okay? Um, it's 1 over F prime G of A, yeah. or so G of X. F prime G of X. G of X. Or, or not G of X in this case. They called this g as the inverse. Right. F negative 1 of x, right? Right. There. That is what you have to do, all right? And if you don't know that, you're in deep, deep trouble. Um, write an equation. Now, here's the thing. You know this, but let's think about this also. Whoops. Let's think about this also. you got to get the point. So if I go g negative 1, of 2. When is y, when is g2? g is 2 at what? 1. <clears throat> Alright? At 1. So we have g of 1 equals 2, right? If I go back the other way. Those are my two situations. So I have the point. The point is 1 comma 2. Now what do I need? I simply need the slope, right? So now the slope is g negative 1 of 2 prime equals 1 over, it's going to be g prime of g, g negative 1 of 2, which we know now, right? g negative 1 of 2, which is what? We know that is 1. So it's 1 over g prime of 1. What is g prime of 1 from the table? 5. So I get 1 over 5, which is 1 fifth. Now I have the slope is 1 fifth. The point is 1 comma 2. How about point slope form? That's got to be it. It has to be it. I'm not sure what the points will be awarded for, all right? Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Thank you. Everybody. All right. And again, Ellen and, and uh, Andrew, I'll send them the link. I'll put this on YouTube next hour. You can turn that off. Bye, guys.